What's going on everyone? Today we'll be covering the addition of halogens to conjugated dienes or the 1,4,1,2 addition of halogens. And in this video we'll be covering these two examples right here. We're going to be going over the ins and outs of these reactions and then we're going to go over the mechanism as well. All while throwing in some tips and tricks that professors don't really like to explain in class simply because they just like to make it a little bit harder for us. So just stay tuned so you'll be able to solve any types of these problems and be able to solve these a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurately on exams. Let's go! Alright, so to kick off our first example, we're going to be looking at this molecule right here. But before we actually hop into the reaction and the mechanism aspect of this problem, I want to first explain to you something that's going to help us in the long run. So for all of these reactions, there's always going to be two major products or two products that are going to form. However, only one of them is going to be major and one of them is going to be minor. So, the easiest way to tell which one is going to be major, which one is going to be minor, and this is important to be able to tell because on exams, they're usually going to ask for the major product, is going to be with the presence of heat. So if there, or with the absence of heat. So if there's no heat, we're always going to get the 1, 2 addition, which I'll explain a little bit later on what, me, what it means. And if there is heat, we're going to get the 1, 4 addition. Okay, so the first step in this reaction, and this will stay true no matter what type of problem it is with no matter what type of molecules we're using is to create the most stable carbocation so we want to see which double bond could attack the bromine to give us the most stable carbocation and we do this by looking at the types of carbons that these double bonds have so this double bond has two secondary while this one has a tertiary and a secondary so we know that the, that the carbocation will be the most stable on that tertiary carbon. So we want to form it on that carbon. So this double bond is going to attack the bromine because the double bond has a lot of electron density. And it's going to push off this, creating a Br- in solution. So now for the next step, we're going to form our carbocation and attach our bromine. So Okay, so when so when our reaction does not contain any heat, we want to think of heat as a fuel source, as something that can allow us to push the reaction further. So here we have no heat, we have no fuel, so the major product is going to be the one that is formed the fastest, so the least amount of steps. So when there is no heat, after we form the most stable carbocation, the bromine, the Br- minus created in the first step from this bromine right here, is just going to come in and attack the carbocation and this will be our end product for when there is no heat so if we go in and draw it in it will look something like this okay and again it's called a one two product and it's called a one two product because when we look at the conjugated system right here this is going to be carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you see, we added bromines on carbon 2 and carbon 1 right here. And that's why it's called 1, 2 addition. Okay, so when a reaction does have heat, we're going to have to take it a step further because again, think of heat as fuel. It can push the product a little bit further, the reaction a little bit further to create a more stable molecule so it's not interested in creating the fastest molecule it's created it's interested in creating the most stable product so the first step is still going to be the same we're going to still form the most stable carbocation but then this is where it changes a little bit so because we have the heat because we have the fuel the energy we can push this step further to make it more stable and all that more stable means in this scenario is to make the double bond more substituted. So we want to make it so that it's touching more carbons. So if we take this double bond and move it over to these carbons, we see something happen to create the molecule, to, to make the molecule more stable. So we have the carbocation moving over, we have the double bond being touched by this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. So it's more substituted than when, it, than when it was over here. And then from here, because it's more stable now, the Br- minus from the first step up here can come in and attack the carbocation. And this will form our end product when there is heat present in the reaction. Okay, so 
We're going to go over the similarities and differences between these reactions to help you better understand it. So when we look, when there is no heat, we want to form the fastest product. We form the one, two product when there is no heat because we have no fuel to drive the reaction. All we care about is making it as fast as possible. But when we do have heat, it doesn't really matter how fast we make it because we have the fuel to go and make a more stable molecule, which is what we want to do when we have heat. So we end up creating the more stable molecule by making the double bond more substituted. So here we ended up putting our bromine on the one spot, two, three, and four spot. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. It's a little bit confusing at first, but we're going to go through a little bit more practice and we'll see what we learn from going there. Let's go. All right, so to hop into our second example, we're going to be looking at this molecule right here. And really, before we would hop into this one, I want to also emphasize again that whenever we're looking at these types of reactions, we're always going to be forming two possible products. But one is going to be major and one is going to be minor. And we tell this by identifying if there is a presence of heat or if there is an absence of heat. All right. So again, hopping into the reaction, the first step is always going to be the same. And it's going to be to form the most stable carbocation. cation. So we, did, we identify the two double bonds and we see which one would be able to be used to form the most stable carbocation. There's a primary carbon here and a secondary carbon here. Then we have a secondary here and a tertiary here. So we know that this is where the carbocation is going to be. So this double bond is going to be used to attack this bromine which is then ultimately gonna sh give us this molecule right here. Okay. And then don't forget your double bond. Okay, so like if we think of heat as fuel, as something that can push the reaction further along, if we do not have heat in the reaction, we do not have fuel, right? So the major product is gonna be the product that happens the fastest because we don't have the fuel to go any further. So, we have a Br- minus floating in solution from this step right here when the bromine left. It's going to attack the carbocation and this will give us this product. Okay, so this can be the 1, 2 addition. Again, if we count our carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, and these are only going to be the carbons in the conjugated system, meaning a double bond followed by double bond. We'll see that we added a carbon on carbon one. I mean, we added a bromine on carbon one and carbon two. That's why it's called one, two. Okay, so here, again, if there's heat or if there's not heat in the system, the initial step is still the same. So we still form the carbocation when there is heat in the system. The only difference is that when we do have heat, we have extra fuel, so we don't care about forming the fastest product. We care about forming the most stable product, which is going to take some energy and a few more steps to actually get to. So when we have heat to form the most stable, the, to form the most stable product, we're going to want to make the double bond more substituted. So to do this, we use a resonance. We move over the double bond. And this causes a few things to happen. So one, the double bond is moved over. For it to be more substituted because now it's being touched by three different carbons instead of just being touched by this one carbon and the carbocation is going to move to this carbon right here as double bond moved over and left this carbon alone so now that we have a more substituted double bond we know that our molecule is more stable so a br minus is going to come in which again is from the initial step and attack the carbocation and then from here, our end product is going to look something like this. Okay. And again, if you look, this, this is going to be a 1,4 addition because we added a bromine on carbon 1, 2, 3, and a bromine on carbon 4 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So again, when there is no heat in the system, we just want to create the fastest product. So it's going to be less depths. And after we form the carbocation, the bromine will come in and attack. However, when we do have heat, we're still going to form the carbocation first because that's the initial step, no matter if there's heat or if there's no heat. But then we're going to form the more stable product by making the double bond more substituted, followed by the bromine attacking. 
Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned at least a little bit from this video. And I hope this is going to help you at least be able to solve some type of exam problems a little bit faster, a little bit more accurately. Uh, please leave down below any comments or questions that you may have. And let us know of any other topics that you guys want us to cover for the future. Let's go!